this is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design this vectorized bird logo and construct it out of circles that follow the golden ratio. And without getting into too much detail, the golden ratio is a ratio of 1.618 and it's been used historically throughout design and architecture to create uh, designs that are just more appealing to the human eye. And in order for us to create this logo out of golden ratio circles, we're first going to have to construct a, go a golden ratio grid, which I will be demonstrating here in Inkscape. So let's go ahead and get Inkscape opened up. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document to make sure we are all working with a similar view. So we'll go to document properties up here. File, Document Properties. We want to change the display units to pixels. And where it says Show Page Border, I'm just going to turn that off and then we can close out of that. We'll go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And I want, to up, I want to turn on these uh, icons up here where it says Snap to Cusp Nodes. We're going to want that turned on. And where it says Snap, uh, snap smooth nodes including quadrant points of ellipses. We want that turned on. We want both of those on for the duration of this tutorial. And over here where it says uh, when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion, we want that turned off. And finally what we want to do is open up the align and distribute menu. With that button we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients to stroke menu with that button up there. So what we're going to do first is create a square. So we'll grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And I'm going to bring the opacity down about in half. I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to change the color of this to red. I'll grab the uh, select tool over here and where it says um, when, when locked change both width and height by the same proportion, we're going to turn on that lock icon to lock the proportions when we scale things. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D. And I'll turn that blue and then I'll just snap this right on top of it like that. And then I'll hold Shift and click on the other one. And with these both selected, I'll hit Control C on the keyboard to copy it. Or you can go to Edit, Copy. I just think it's easier to hit Control C. So once we've done that, we can click off of it to deselect. Take just this blue rectangle, I mean square, and hit Control D to uh, duplicate that. We'll turn that green, and we'll go to Edit, Paste Size, Paste Height, and then we can snap that onto the right side of these two squares right here. And once we've done that, I'm going to click and drag over both of these and hold Control and Shift and scale them down a little bit. And I'll click on them a second time to get our rotation handles, and I'm just going to hold Control and grab one of these corner arrows and rotate this around 90 degrees so it's sitting vertically like that. And then once we've done that, I want to copy all of this by hitting Control C click off of it to deselect everything and take just this blue rectangle here and duplicate that. Oops. Duplicate that by hitting control D. We'll go to edit, paste size, paste height, snap it onto there. And we're going to do the same thing. Click and drag over all of this. Click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold control to rotate it around 90 degrees. And we, if you want, you can click on it again to get back to the scaling handles and hold control and shift to scale that down a little bit. And once we've done that, I want to copy all of that by hitting Control C. Click off of it to deselect. I'm going to take this red square, duplicate that. We'll go to Edit, Paste Size, Paste Height, and snap that on there. And we're going to do this one more time. So we'll click and drag over all of this. Click on it again to get the rotation handles and hold Control and rotate this around 90 degrees. Click on it again to get back to the scaling handles and just scale it down a little bit. Copy it by hitting Control C and click off of it to deselect everything. I'm going to take this blue square, duplicate that, and go to Edit, Paste Size, Paste Height, and snap it onto there. And then I want to take these three small squares right here, hold Shift and click on each one of those, and just flip them vertically like that, with that button there. And what we have here is, you know what we should do? Let's click and drag over all of this, and let's turn off the fill color by clicking the X over here and then hold shift and click the color black to give that a fill. And I'm going to bring the opacity of that all the way up. I'm going to change the stroke style over here. I'm going to change that to uh, pixels and change this to maybe like a two point stroke and click off of that to deselect everything. And what we have here is we, this is a golden ratio grid. So what we're going to do now is create circles that fit perfectly within each of those squares. So to do that, 
I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'm going to snap the cursor up here to this top left corner and then click and drag until it snaps to the bottom right corner and then let go. And we now have a circle that fits within that square. And we're just going to go ahead and do this for the rest of these squares. You might want to zoom in on this by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. Go ahead and zoom in. And go, go back to the select tool, press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And I'm going to click and drag over all of this and go to path, uh, object to path. And if you want, what you have now is this is a perfect representation of the golden ratio. If you want, you can save this as a template to use it in other sorts of design work. Otherwise, I'm just, what I'm going to do now is click off of everything and I'm going to start deleting the squares because we don't need the grid. We just need the circles within that grid. So I'm going to click on the squares and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. Get rid of that. And I'm going to get these, these two small circles right here. I'm going to get rid of one of those as well because we just need one. We just need one circle that size. We just need one circle of each size and we're good. And what we could do now is click and drag over all of these and center them up on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. And what we have here are a bunch of circles that follow the golden ratio. And these are the circles we are going to use to construct our bird image. And it's important that when we're using these circles, it is important that we do not resize them at all. Otherwise, that takes away the whole point of everything we just did in the first part of this video. So now that we've done that, let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to take uh, the second biggest circle right here. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm just going to bring this over here. And I'm going to start constructing the bird. And I'm going to make another copy of this, so I'm going to hit Control D. And I'm going to hold Control and just move this to the right a little bit. And if you look at the intersecting area right here, this is going to be the top part of the bird's head right here. And this part out here is going to be where the bird's beak begins. Maybe I'll move that to the right a little more. That's pretty good. Let me just make sure they're centered up on the uh, horizontal axis there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, the big circle right here. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm going to take the right side of this circle and snap it onto the right side of this left circle right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and snap that onto there until it, the cusp of nodes snap. And then I'll duplicate that big circle again by hitting Control D. And I'll just take this and snap this over here to this left side of this right circle like that. And if you look at, let me take these and just move these out of the way of the other circles. If you look at the intersecting area in here, if you could try to envision right here, this is where the bird's body is going to be, right in here, in this area. So what I'm going to do now is this area going out here is going to be the beak. So I'm going to put a little shape in there to finish that off. I'm going to take the third biggest uh, circle right here. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm going to take this left side and snap it onto the right side of this circle in here. So as you can see in there, this intersecting area right here is going to be where the beak is. And I want to give this bird an eye. Let me go back to the image over here to show you. This is where the beak is. This is where the body is. We're going to create a wing for this next. We're actually going to put the eyeball in here next, and then we're going to put the wing right here as well. I'm going to show you how to create this in both variations so that you have the design by itself and the design with the key line grid like you see here. So uh, let me go back to Inkscape. Um, what I'll do now is I'll take the smallest circle right there, and I'll hit Control D to duplicate that, and I'll put that right there. That's going to represent the eyeball. Let me zoom in over that. And what I want to do now is hold shift and click on those two circles that it sits within just so we could center it up in there. I'm going to click on the uh, under the uh, distribute panel here. I'm going to click the button over here that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal. And it's, going to, it's just going to center it up in that area. And we can click off of that and zoom back out. And what I'll do now is I'm going to take the biggest circle over here. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D. And I'm going to take the bottom portion of this circle and snap it onto this intersecting area right here. So I'm going to take that and snap that onto there. And that's this area right here is going to represent the top portion of the wing. So we're going to have to duplicate this circle again. Hit Control D. And I'm just going to uh, move this down over here like this. And this intersecting area right here is going to be 
where the wing is, if you can try to envision it with the rest of the bird. And this sort of technique of designing things, it's usually easier if you have your own design idea in mind and you go about constructing it. If you're following along with my design idea, this may not make much sense to you. It may be a little tricky to envision this, but if you can get like pencil and paper and sketch out a design of your own, maybe something like a rocket ship or a fish or something, you'll notice if you, if you can import that sketch into Inkscape, you'll notice it's much easier to follow along and envision how these circles interact with each other when it's your own design. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind if you're following along with this tutorial. So uh, with that being said, we have now created all of the circles we need to construct our bird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all of those circles and I'm going to move them out of the way of this over here. Move them over here. And with them all selected, I'm going to go to Path, Combine. And once I've done that, I want to copy that by hitting Control C. I want to grab the uh, rectangles tool and I just want to create a little rectangle going over that. And then I'll go to edit, paste size, paste size. I'm going to grab the select tool and with that new rectangle that we just created, with that selected, I'm going to click the button up here that says lower selection to the bottom. So we go ahead and lower that to the bottom and I'm going to click and drag over everything so we have everything selected and I'm going to center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And what we could do next is go to path. Actually, you know what? What we want to do first is let's give this a red fill and then we'll go to Path Division. And what that's going to do is that's going to break everything up into its own individual little piece. As, as you see here, it's going to be individual little pieces. Let me put them back. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through and find the areas. We're going to find the pieces that we want to make up the bird and start coloring them in so we can distinguish them from the rest of the, the uh, this mess here. So. What I'll do first, actually, I'll just take this big square and just get that out of there. We don't need that. And let me zoom back in on this. If you notice here, this top part, this is going to be the eyeball. We can start there. I'm going to make that white. And this part right here is going to be the beak. I'm just going to fill that in with blue for now. That's just temporary. We're just looking for a color that contrasts nicely with red. I'm going to go ahead and fill these in with blue. All of these pieces are going to represent the beak right here. And then we could start filling in these pieces with a bot where it's going to represent the body. I'm just going to shift click these so I can click multiple, multiple objects at once and fill them all in. See, there's the bird's body. And then right here we have the bird's wing. Color that in with blue as well. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And what we could do now is we can start going on the red shapes and clicking the X to get rid of the fill. So just go ahead and just get rid of the fill from all of those. In fact, I'm going to shift click those so I can select multiples and get this done quicker. Oops. Grab that one, that one too, and then that one as well. Turn that off. And oh, can't forget about that little piece in there. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago, I'm gonna show you how to create two different variations. One where we still have this key line grid in place and another without the key line grid. So let me, let's take, Let's click and drag over all of this and put this off to the side and hit Control D and take this copy and put this off to the side. And with all of that selected, we can just click the X so that it has no fill in there at all. We're just left with that. Now we can come back over here, zoom in and start get, getting rid of these extra pieces going on outside of here because this is going to be the variation without the keyline grid. And to do this, I'm just clicking each object and pressing delete on the keyboard. Get rid of that. I don't know what that is, get rid of that. And what we could do now is, um, if you notice here, these are broken up into individual little pieces. I wanna combine some of these pieces together to make this design a little more fluid. Let me go back to the design, the thumbnail over here and show you. If you notice, these are, uh, these are nice fluid pieces. They're not broken up into tiny little polygons like you see uh, on our screen currently. So let me go back to Inkscape and I will show you how to do that. Let's take this shape right here and hold shift, click that shape right there. And I want to unify them both together by going to path, union. And I want to do the same thing with these two shapes right there. So we have a nice, fluid, lengthy shape going through there. And the same thing right here. I want to combine these two together by going to path, union. And right here, these two shapes, that should, that should be one shape right here. So we'll click on that. I'll hold shift, click on the other one, path, union. And if you notice here where the wing is, this going, this swoops all the way through. That should all be one shape. So I'm going to shift click on all of those. 
And I think that should do it for those. I think the rest of that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to color this in. And as you saw in the thumbnail, I colored it in with gradient. So we'll do the same thing here. Uh, let me click on this shape here. I'm going to make this a shade of pink. I'll choose like a, like a, like a dark, almost like a reddish pink. Do something like that. Then I'll come over to the fill tab. I'll click on where it says linear gradient. And um, I'll go to the gradient tool, which is over here. Or you can press G on the keyboard. Click on that stop right there, and I'll make that stop yellow. And I'll take this pink stop over here and put this at the bottom. Oops, click the wrong thing. Uh, if you make that mistake, just hit Control Z. You could always go back. You could always undo everything by hitting Control Z. So I'll take this stop and put this down here. Take this stop, put this up here. And with the gradient tool still selected, I'm going to click on this shape. Give that the same gradient. Click on linear gradient, and there it is in our list right there. We just use that same gradient we just created. Put this down here and this up here like that. And the beak is colored in. So we're just going to go through and color in the body now. Um, let me go to the select tool. Let me click on this blue shape right here. I'm going to change the shade of blue a little bit. Maybe something like that. Or now maybe a little darker. I'm using the HSL tab under the fill tab. For this part of the tutorial, it's more subjective. You can color it in however you'd like. You don't have to use the same exact specific shades I'm using here. So uh, this is just this is just my own personal, what I think looks good. So uh, I'm going to use that shade of blue. I'm going to click on the linear gradient. I'll go back to the uh, gradient tool. Click on this stop over here to the right, and I'm going to choose a shade of green. Maybe something like that. That's pretty good. I'll take this shape, take this stop, put this over here. I'll take the blue stop and put that to the right, like that. Then I'll click on this part and give that a linear gradient and just go through like we did with the beak. Just uh, choose it from the list. Same thing over here, linear gradient. Choose the gradient we already created. Put this over here to the right. Uh, I'm going to hold control to lock it onto the vertical, uh, to the horizontal axis so it comes straight across like this. Click on this shape, give that a linear gradient as well. Lock it onto the vertical axis. I should do the same over here. I got this gradient going diagonal. It doesn't match the rest of it. So um, let me fix that. And that's good as it is. I should reverse this actually. The blue has to be over here and this one over here. Let me go back to the select tool. And what we could do now is click and drag over all of that and come down here all the way to the far left where we have this X icon. Just hold shift and click on that X to get rid of the outline. And then we can group it together with the group button up here. And as you'll see, we have our bird constructed. So to, to, to uh, make the other variation with the uh, key line grid, I'm just going to click and drag over all of those circles and group them together with this button. Group selected objects. And I'm going to take this bird, hit control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to grab this bottom corner right here of the bird's like tail and just snap it into place where it should be down there. And I'll just lower that to the bottom, clicking the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And if you want, you can click on the circles now and ungroup them. You can go to the stroke style, make them a little thinner, maybe 0.75. And you can even give them a different shade. I'll uh, maybe like lighten them up a bit. I'll hold shift and click on like the color gray, give them like a shade of gray or something like that. And we can zoom out. And as you can see, we are pretty much finished creating our Golden Ratio bird logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.